This time on Burnouts and Rotor Blades, we make the Vegas engine cooler. You, you know, with the fan shroud. Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. It overheats. It does pretty well in the cooler temperatures at night and stuff like that, but in the Vegas heat, it's just not cutting it. And part of the reason I think is this tiny fan and the other part of the reason is it doesn't have a fan shroud. Not having a fan shroud allows air to come in from the path of least resistance from the sides of the radiator as opposed to being forced to come through the radiator to dissipate the heat. Whenever I'm cruising down the highway, um, it actually cools really well, um, but then as soon as I come to a stop in traffic, it's, it, you just watch the temperature climb on the needle. So we're going to fix both of those problems today. One, we're going to install this significantly more aggressive uh, flex fan. And two, check out this radiator shroud that I built. Before we fix those things, take a look at the new shop lights. If you really look at the fan, you'll notice that as it moves through its as it moves through its arc, it's missing this huge chunk, right? But that's only if the fan could pull 100% of what it's directly in front of. But that's not the case because this fan, much like a propeller blade on an airplane or the rotor blade of a helicopter, produces vortex rings on the end, which makes this last portion of it a non-lifting surface. So the wind that's coming off of it just swirls back and gets recycled. So really your cooling is just coming from in here. Well, if we add a fan shroud to this, and that fan shroud is ducted in a way where it allows it to pull from this, uh, this region of the radiator, not only will we increase the cooling surface area, but we'll increase the efficiency of the fan. So even if we use this fan, we would see a better result from it specifically. And hopefully it fits. And it 100% doesn't fit. Dang it. So when I ordered this thing, I ordered it with by the picture having the flanges folded out. And that's what I set up for in my head. So.
All right, that's crooked. Perfect. Now this fan is 17 inches. Manufacturer recommendation is that you have one inch spacing all the way around. If I measured this one right, it should be about about right all the way around. Now I don't believe for a second that this is gonna fit in the space that I have available. So what we're gonna do is draw a little line right here and we're gonna cut and recess this down into this. We'll leave the outside lines, take everything inside of it and see if we can't ruin this. What's a dig two digit number? A number that has two numbers in it, like 10. Or 12? Yeah, or 12. And can you check this to make sure this is good? Uh, I don't know, that's a lot of work it sounds like. I did a lot more work writing this, look. Odd, even, odd, odd, oh, even. Good job, you got it. Okay, let me ask you a question real quick. What am I doing that's really dangerous? Whenever I'm like this, what's something I should be wearing? Goggles. Hey, you got it. Yeah. Why are you not doing it? Um, it's a good question. That I don't have an answer to.
all installed now. And um, moment of truth, everything looks to be connected except for the thing I didn't connect over there. Okay, now everything's connected and we can go ahead and uh, try to start it. I'm gonna leave the camera pointed this way so that you can see uh, you know, what makes contact as opposed to the disappointment in my face. As I mentioned earlier, a well-constructed radiator fan shroud should be able to duct air even from the furthest most corner of the radiator as shown by this piece of paper sticking to the edge of the radiator at idle. This is the outside air temperature. This is the car's temperature. Even after installing a 160 degree thermostat and all that work, it's still doing the same thing that it was doing at the beginning of the video. It overheats. With all the things I could do, the first thing I did do was... Spend some big boy money on this uh, radiator. Like a glove. This Griffin aluminum radiator is a 26 by 16 dual core radiator. It's a part number 1-25221-X and it was less than $200. You may be surprised to find out that it was as close to a direct swap as you could possibly imagine. I did build a custom mount for the top of it, but that's really because the stock mounts for the top of my radiator are already pretty haggard, and I thought that it would look a lot cooler if I built an aluminum mount that matched with the fan shroud that I just built. As for the radiator hoses, this lower radiator hose is a silicone hose for a 65 to 67 Chevelle, while this upper radiator hose is made of a couple pieces connected by this coupler that houses our temperature switch. This temperature switch controls the last piece in our cooling system, which is an electric pusher fan that I've mounted to the front of the AC condenser in front of the core support. There's no AC on this Vega yet, but stay tuned in another video where we're going to install some. For the time being, this spall unit is slim enough at a 12 inch by 2.5 inch depth that it fits nicely behind the grill of the Vega, requiring no modifications at all. That's it for this video, but come back next time as we put this cooling system to the test with some massive burnouts. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and want to see more like it. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye bye, Dad. Bye bye, Bubba. See you later.